But it's time now for our press review today. And for that, I'm joined in the studio by Erin Agunke. Hi, Erin. Erin, uh, papers today, of course, digesting some really uh, horrific details about uh, the nature of the massacres committed in southern Israel on Saturday. Yeah, the conflict yet again dominating the papers. The New York Times uh, on its homepage this morning sums it up by saying Hamas left a trail of terror in Israel. Uh, that's a combination of the indiscriminate shooting at the Nova Festival, uh, the massacre at, uh, at Kfar Aza, at the Berry Kibbutz, where over 100 people were found uh, killed alone, and also in the city of uh, Sturat. Uh, the victims include, of course, uh, women and children, but also a separate New York Times piece also reminds us uh, that peace activists and kibbutzniks, residents of these uh, kibbutzes, uh, were among the dead and missing. The Times saying that this has fueled further resentment of the Netanyahu government as the assailants met little resistance at all of these places uh, in the South while military uh, presence had been beefed up to protect settlers uh, in the West Bank. Now, a lot of papers really kind of zoomed in on some of the devastating revelations uh, about children. This is the Times in the UK. Hamas cut the throats of babies in a massacre. Italy's Corriere della Sere. Uh, I bambini, l'orore, children, the horror. I'll focus on aujourd'hui uh, en France today, uh, saying that what was typically, who's focusing on, which is focusing on the kibbutz uh, massacres, and says what were typically havens for peace were transformed into mass graves. The editorialist in the piece, though, wonders uh, where the typically outraged voices are uh, organizing protests. Artists who usually so quickly sign petitions. Where are those petitions? Where are the people uh, to say, we are all the children of Kfar Aza? He concludes that humanity risks descending into humanity if more people don't come out and, and denounce uh, the horrors of what we've seen. Now, I'll finish, Haxi, with uh, this cartoon, which was on the front page of Le Temps Swiss paper this morning. Uh, the laws of war, according to the Hamas version, uh, women and children first, of course, uh, a reference to the number of, of innocent women and children uh, that they massacred in southern Israel. And there are a lot of papers today also focusing on Israel's response in the Gaza Strip. Yeah, as the Financial Times tells us, Israel is both pounding the territory and also reportedly preparing for a ground invasion. As well, the Amil Israeli military says it's hit uh, more than 2,300 what it describes as Hamas targets and also called up a record number of reservists uh, in response to those Hamas attacks, over 300,000. Uh, now, this piece in the Washington Post uh, explains that obviously conflict is a regular occurrence in the region, but he says that this time is different. The images, the editorialist writes, uh, of Israeli casualties and prisoners, hostages, are haunting him. But he adds as well that you can only assume that Israel, in response, will kill hundreds, even thousands of civilians. Already some 900 uh, Palestinians have been killed, half of whom, he says, are women and children. And he also details uh, some of the electricity cuts, the water cuts in the Gaza Strip, and just how dangerous it's become to do simple tasks like, like buy food uh, for your family. Uh, finally, this piece in 972 magazine, which is kind of a leftist independent Israeli piece, uh, argues that simply raining missiles on Hamas cannot be a solution. The editorialist this time, Yuval Abraham, says that only a political answer will change things for the better. And he says that includes negotiating with Hamas, of course, to ensure the safe return of those Israeli hostages. It includes uh, lifting the blockade on Gaza, ensuring Palestinian sovereignty, and connecting residents of the Gaza Strip uh, with the rest of the country through, you know, real uh, good faith international negotiations. And Erin, this latest conflict has also stirred political divisions here in France. What do papers here in France have to say about that? Well, they're division taxi, but you could also say unity in, in a way. That's because much of France's political class is now actually united against LFI, uh, that's uh, France unbowed, uh, in condemning them because that party has been uh, accused of refusing to condemn or describe Hamas as a terrorist organization, instead describing their axes, actions as, you know, things like an armed offensive uh, by, by Palestinian forces. Now, Liberation details uh, in today's edition how this has essentially created a fracture within the larger NUP alliance of which France Unbowed is a part. Now, the party dug itself kind of into a deeper hole uh, when one of its elected officials yesterday described uh, only Hamas's armed wing uh, as, as guilty of, of war crimes. People obviously saying all of Hamas uh, is guilty of the same crimes. But I will say that at least one member of France Unbowed, 
uh, has expressed a different opinion. Le Monde interviewed Francois Ruffin, who called on the left to use strong words to describe Hamas's actions, and he certainly uh, did that himself. Ruffin saying that Hamas is a fanatic terrorist organization, one that's hostile to peace, wants no compromise, wants the eradication of Israel. He nonetheless does indeed uh, criticize Israel for kind of feeding the group's fanaticism by making what he describes uh, an open-air prison uh, of Gaza. And Erin, there's a, a very similar debate underway uh, in much of the world, also specifically the United States. Yeah, uh, this piece in the United in the New York Times says that uh, if the left is not looking at horror at what has happened in Israel over the past few days, it needs to take a hard look at itself, especially because at those protests in New York this week, a speaker at a pro-Palestinian kind of left-wing rally in New York essentially uh, celebrated the atrocities committed in southern Israel. Now that forced Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, arguably one of kind of the the hard or left's uh, most popular uh, uh, members to come out and condemn Hamas's actions in the strongest possible terms. So she did follow through with a demand for a ceasefire, which the editorialist argues is actually kind of masked pro-Hamas language, uh, assuming that Israel should not respond to the atrocities that were, were committed on, on its territory. The editorialist says, we've seen similar things in London, in Australia, uh, uh, across the West, really. And he wonders if the bien-pensant, bien uh, for whom anti-Zionism, that is the denial of Israel's right to exist in any form, has played a role in essentially creating the moral and intellectual climate for what's unfolded, the violence uh, that, that we see in Israel. Now, I'll mention that there is another possible divide in the U.S. as well, and that's amongst the right. Um, as Haaretz tells us, the Israeli paper, uh, the far-right news pundit uh, Tucker Carlson uh, criticized Republicans for advocating for Israel, and that makes him an outlier now amongst his allies, even on the extremes of the Republican Party, most of whom have fully advocated for Israel's right uh, to self-defense. Haaretz wonders now if this could essentially offer the first challenge to some rare bipartisan unity in the United States uh, on the question of Israel's right uh, to defend itself for, for the first time, really, maybe ever. Erin Agukia with a look through uh, today's papers. Thank you very much.